let her move a gosh darn inch till I catch hold of that bridle. I'll let her stand still, still, still. On the Arizona prairie, Pascal Tyler says a silent prayer, holds out his hand, and waits for tragedy to let itself be dissuaded from happening. In today's episode of Against the Storm. Today we bring you another chapter of Against the Storm, written by Sandra Michael and presented by Procter & Gamble, the makers of Ivory Plate. What day is this? Eh? That's right, it's Monday, June 3rd. It may turn out to be a red-letter day in your life because today you have an opportunity to enter Ivory Flake's exciting new Pontiac contest and you may win one of these marvelous prizes. Now listen, this very week, Ivory Flakes is giving away ten gorgeous brand-new Pontiac special four-door sedans absolutely free. And that's not all. Every Pontiac winner also gets a book of coupons good for 1,000 gallons of stepped-up Texaco Fire Chief gasoline. As a former car winner puts it, believe me, it sure is nice when you can pull up to any Texaco station anywhere and tell the attendant to fill her up and only clip off a few coupons as payment for his services. Yes, and friends, besides the car and the 1,000 gallons of gas, you also get $100 cash vacation money with your Pontiac. $100 to spend as you like for extra fun for a swanky evening at that new resort hotel. And remember, too, this contest offers 100 cash prizes of $10 each. And say it's going to be duck soup for you to enter this contest. It's a snap. Now, listen, here's what you do. You put 25 words or less on the end of this sentence. Here it is. I like ivory flakes because. Now, maybe you've been using ivory flakes for washing all your baby's clothes. So you can tell about that. Or if you use this pure flake soap for your stockings, well, here's the kind of thought that can help you write your sentence. I like ivory flakes because it means real savings on my hosiery budget when I use ivory flakes for washing my stockings out every night. Now, that's certainly not hard, is it? Of course not. And remember, even if you've never used ivory flakes, one trial may give you a winning idea. Say, if you don't think it's a thrill to win a car, well, listen to what one of our former ivory flakes winners says. Her name is Mrs. Agnes McDavid, and she lives in Schenectady, New York. And she wrote us this. Winning this contest was one of the biggest thrills of my life. I didn't sleep for two nights. I was so excited. And I kept wondering if it could really be true that such good fortune had come to me. My two children were equally thrilled, but not quite as surprised as I when the good news came. They knew I had entered the contest, so the logical thing was for me to win. However, my husband lacked that confidence in my, uh, shall I say, ability. <laughs> Maybe you think I haven't had the laugh on him. And friends, you may surprise your family, too. So enter this contest today. Now, here's what you do again. Put 25 words or less on the end of this sentence. I like ivory flakes because. And then mail your finished sentence with your name and address and one ivory flakes box top, either size or facsimile. Remember, one box top or facsimile. Address ivory flakes, Cincinnati, Ohio. Ivory flakes, Cincinnati, Ohio. Entries are judged on originality, aptness of thought, and sincerity. This contest is open to the United States and Canada. Judge's decision is final and duplicate prizes will be awarded in case of ties. See complete printed rules in the June issue of McCall's Magazine. But hurry, remember, every entry you send means one more opportunity to win. Contest closes this coming Saturday, June 8th, at midnight. Pontiac winners will be announced in about two weeks. Make it a perfect summer. Win a Pontiac. It's 10.30 o'clock on a serene and shimmering morning. The Arizona desert lies motionless and vast under a sky without clouds. Pasco Tyler, sitting on his horse, makes note of a scene that has become transfixed, suspended, poised on the verge of tragedy. Quick, the horse that Lucretia Hale was riding stands quavering, poised. Almost beneath the roan's feet, Lucretia lies on her back. Her left foot caught in the twisted stirrup of the saddle that a moment ago became unloosened and swung suddenly under the horse. Lucretia is looking up at the trembling animal. She feels her heart moving violently and the silence of the desert pounds in her ears. Lucretia knows that any sudden motion, any false move, may cause the tense and frightened horse to lash out her with steel-shod hoofs or set out in a mad rush across the rock-strewn prairie. She feels a small, sharp stone under the back of her head. She closes her eyes and lies deadly still. 
Lucretia, you just lie real still, Lucretia. Don't say anything. It'll be all right. Just a minute now. I'm going to get off my horse. Whoa, quick. Whoa, girl. You're all right. Nothing's going to hurt you. That's right. You're a good horse. She'll be all right, Lucretia. We'll just give her a little bit of time. Say, quick, my girl. How'd you like an extra pail of oats for lunch today? Ah, you'd like that, huh? Nice big bucket of oats. Lie still, Lucretia. Just lie dead still. It'll be all right. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. I'm going to get off now. If she does make a break, throw both arms around your head and twist yourself sideways away from her as much as you can. That's it. Oh, now. Oh, oh, now. If she, if she jumps. Remember, no matter which it is, I'll grab her and you'll be all right. Now, here I go. Mm-hmm. Moving slowly, but deliberately, and without pause, Pascal swings out of the saddle and eases himself to the ground. He advances slowly toward Lucretia's horse. Now he's six feet from the animal, who watches him suspiciously. Slowly, he raises his hand and holds it out toward the mare. Lucretia opens her eyes and watches him, paralyzed with fright. Oh, now, quick. You just cut that out now, you understand? Won't take but a second now. Everything will be all right. Stop that, I say. You want that bucket of oats, don't you? Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh, now, 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 now. That won't do. Oh, oh. All right. I got a Lucretia. So, so quick. So, so, so good. So good. All right, now. Enough out of you. Cut it out, I say. Talk now, Miss Hale. Uh, I don't think I can. Don't wonder if you can't, ma'am. Now, the saddle's free. Here, here, stand still, you dog, car, little old monkey, you quick. That saddle won't bite you. I'll just snub this dumb little horse to my saddle, and I'll help you get your foot untangled. Oh, I, I can manage it that much. Just a minute now, I'll be right with you. You'll behave yourself. There's thought and promotion. No, not that way, Miss Hale. You're twisting it the wrong way. Here, let me do that. You see, it's wound around this way. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, say, I'm sorry. You aren't hurt, Miss Hale. Oh, no, I'm sure I'm perfectly all right. It's only... Oh, oh it's oh. easy now, easy. This ankle oh. doesn't feel so very good, I guess, huh? No, not so very good. Oh, no, but what, we better kind of strap it up for a little bit, maybe, huh? Oh, Mr. Tyler... You don't suppose I've gone and sprained that silly ankle? Well, I'll tell you, ma'am, I wouldn't say you had gone and done it. Just hold still now. I'll wind it up in a fancy bandana bandage here. Oh, you shouldn't bother. I, I'm sure... It... Oh, see, oh, see, oh, see, doesn't do any good to argue with Doc Tyler. <laughs> well, I'd say we could blame that little old pony over there, except she couldn't help it rightly. She's a plumb scared. Not winding it too tight, am I? Oh, no, that feels much better. That's good. No, poor little silly quick couldn't help but get... We got to pass the blame along that big rattler we saw back there. Now, how does that feel? Oh, much better, thank you, Mr. Tyler. That, that feels wonderful. <laughs> now, that's not just a kind of slightly free use of that word by any chance, Miss Hale. Well, my ankle has felt wonderful in its day, I'll admit that. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you feel in general? Oh, I'm sure I'm perfectly all right. But I would like to get up on my feet. I guess a minute we'll see about that. I got to... Kind of figure how we'll get you back to the ranch. Quite a ride, you know. Oh, I'll be all right. My ankle's probably only wrenched a little. I'm sure there's nothing really wrong with it. I wonder if there'd be any sense. You don't think there's anything really wrong with my ankle, do you, Mr. Tyler? Mm. Why, no, I'm pretty sure not. Surely nothing that'll keep you off your feet more than two or three weeks, anyhow. Off my feet for two or three weeks? Oh, something like that, I imagine. Why do you imagine any such thing as that? Well, it's... Tell you the outright truth, I wasn't imagining exactly. I was hoping. You were? Yes. Yeah. Kind of figured you'd have to stay out here for a little while longer then. Oh, my word. You can tell Arizona wants you to stay the way it's reached out to hold you. <laughs> Even tries to break your bones to make you stay. <laughs> <laughs> Late 
Late that afternoon, Pascal Tyler sat on the low steps of the terrace outside the house Lucretia Hale rents on the X-Bar Ranch. He'd come over from Circle T to hear the doctor's word on Lucretia's injuries. Oh, there you are, Doc. Oh, hello, Pascal. Well, what's worse, Doc? Oh, not so bad. Uh, have a cigarette? Yes, thanks. Oh, no, 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 thanks. You say there's anything serious that ankle, huh? Oh, I think it'll mend nicely. It's a good, clean break. Break? Then it is bolting right now, huh? Oh, I should say so. X-ray we took this noon showed a beautiful fracture. In fact, a double fracture just above the ankle. Well, gosh, Doc, that sounds pretty downright serious to me. <laughs> Why, you know it's not that. Especially when it's a good, clean break. That doesn't even have to be set. Nothing to it at all. Hmm. Well, you mean so long as the patient stays quiet, eh? Mm, naturally. Mm, for a little while, anyway. Well, now, that's what I should think. In that case, it's surely out of the question for Miss Hale to go back east for a while, isn't it, Doc? Oh, no, not at all. Not if she absolutely wants to go. She could fly, you know, if she wanted to get there in a hurry. Now, Doc, would you really recommend that kind of sashaying around when Miss Hale's bones are broken? Well, I'm not recommending anything, Pat. But I wouldn't say I forbid it either. Doc, that's the first time since you gave me castor oil when I was nine years old that I thought you should have been something else besides a doctor. <laughs> now what have I done? Well, if I were you, I'd put my foot down about Miss Hale tearing around in airplanes. I surely would. Well, I don't know why I should. Not any more than I ought to tell her she can't swing by her toes when you see it. She hasn't said anything about airplanes or trains or any other form of travel. At least not to me. Mm hmm? In fact, on the contrary, she tells me she's, uh, well, she's got so fond of Arizona, she's glad of this excuse to stay here for a while. <laughs> well, now, look at that, Pack. Out there to the east end, Cottonwood. Biggest hawk I've seen in 103 years, at least. Pascal Tyler looks, but without seeing the splendid hawk of such historic proportions. He doesn't say anything. And a moment later, the doctor is considerably diverted by the sight of Pascal's Stetson hat whirling upward in the air. Pretty certain sign that Mr. T is suddenly filled with overwhelming joy. All right, now, quick, my girl. There's the coats I promised you this morning. Got all about them till just now. Help yourself, you naughty girl. Make out a good supper for yourself. The right ought to give you another lecture for the way you behaved this morning. Why, do you realize you might have killed the lady? Well, never mind. It's all turned out fine. As a matter of truth, I'm so doggone thankful about those broken bones. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Pascal leans against the corral fence and loses himself in a pleasant reverie. Tomorrow, Lucretia Hale admits a change of heart in the next episode of Against the Storm. This is Ralph Edwards saying good day for the makers of Ivory Flakes, 99 and 44, 100% pure. You sometimes switch to another station after you've heard Against the Storm each day. If you do, let me ask you to keep tuned into this station today and listen with us to that deeply moving radio drama which follows. The Guiding Light. This is the National Broadcasting Company.